the magnitude of these storms being rare for this region in the southeast during the month of June. We expect to see some severe weather here or there to pop up after garden and thratty storms, but this is going to be a serious situation where the atmosphere produces strong storms. Birmingham, right now, uh, we're looking at the temperatures here. We've got the push of upper 70s. We've got the push of dew points as well, 76 on the thermometer, dew point 69. Uh, level 3 uh, threat zone has been expanded as well. When we look at the map, what's gone down here is that we have more real estate in that level 3 zone, and then they put the level 4 on top of it, basically doubling down on the confidence of what the atmosphere is capable of doing. And they want to make sure people are ready. The intensity is really ramped up here. You look at the low-level jet just screaming. We've got the stalled-out front, so many elements in, in place. That's what increases the confidence that this is going to be a, a day where you have to be really on guard. My concern as we go over this setup, uh, Stephen, is that a lot of people in the southeast may not make their move until there is a tornado warning. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their kind of trigger to get in their safe spot. But in this particular case, you're going to have to pay attention to every severe thunderstorm warning that comes across the board. And um, and I, in a way, I understand because we're in June, and as far as a severe weather threat like this, you don't see it in June. So having that guard down, but it is, it's warm, it's muggy out there, and it is unstable. We have had a couple of days of this instability sort of in the atmosphere. A couple of severe thunderstorm watches right now, respectively, they'll cancel them at 2 and 4 p.m. Both of these zones have the potential of very large hail, destructive winds, as uh, well as the possibility of one or two tornadoes. At least in this part of the south, the tornado threat's not the highest. But farther to the east, and we want to quickly hit on this severe thunderstorm warning, it's in northern Alabama. It has been producing... Mm, that might have some big hail in it. ...half dollar size hail, up to two inches in diameter, actually, which would be tennis ball size hail. No mm. storm reports yet of that type of hail, but when we look at the hail parameters, you can see I mean, there's an indication of even Great. grapefruit size. Might be overdone just a bit, but that storm just southwest of Russellville, Alabama, it just crossed the Mississippi state line. It's a nasty one. And there are so many other storms out to the west that will be moving through this very area. When you watch the 3D radar here on our screen or if you're watching it on your Fox Weather app and you're able to see the height of the thunderstorms, especially with this week's weather, when you see those high thunderstorms forming, that gives you an idea of, of hail formation might be going on because there's so much active energy producing tall thunderstorms. That's right. You get that updraft, and that's where we'll have, again, these storms continuing to build. And as it does so, we'll have eventually that hail dropping down. We've seen it time and time again. Sunday, we saw it Monday. We saw it as well as yesterday. Yesterday, we saw some of our biggest hail coming in out of Texas, five and a half inches. So that hail is quite possible along a good stretch of the southeast for today. I will say that it's not our top threat, though, so we want you to be very mindful of that. Uh, Amy said, check in on your severe thunderstorm warnings, check in on the tornado warnings, uh, but don't put your all of your eggs in one pot because we have a lot of threats across the board. Looking at our damaging wind threat, this is where we'll have the bigger chances of those severe thunderstorm warnings being triggered because of this threat. Damaging winds expected from Louisiana all the way through Georgia, and the biggest threat there is going to be right in the middle for Mississippi and Alabama. And then that tornado threat on the tail end, a little closer towards the east, looking at Alabama and Georgia, a good chunk of the southern half of each state under that tornado threat, too. And, Stephen, this is where we just got the information that, you know, Alabama needs to be mm -hmm. particularly on guard and probably an indication that we likely could get a tornado watch for Alabama, at least portions of it. There's your future track coming through Montgomery. Montgomery, I think, has got a lot of risk today, not because just the power of the storms, but also the flooding issues that can come with this, the repetitive nature of the storms. They will be fast moving. If you get one storm clearing in Montgomery, you see how repetitive time after time you get these storms coming um, over the same places. It's it's true. Like two, two sort of threats that we have and of note with that tornado threat. And it's all about the, the sheer environment that we have today. Those tornadoes, if they do form, could be on the stronger side, which is more of a spring-like pattern as opposed to a summer-like one. You had mentioned the screaming jet. We have that. That is going to support. When we look at the, the meteorological parameters, you've got shear, but there are two different types of shear. You have directional shear and you have speed shear. And it's important to note because the wind damage that we could see today is a result of speed shear. That's as you work your way up in the atmosphere, the wind speeds increase. And having that type of shear and the environment, we also have this boundary, this surface front. That's going to be the trigger for that unstable air at the surface. 
once we get that to lift and the speed shear, that's going to lead perhaps to what, what we've been talking about, a derecho, and, and that's left to be seen. And what I think is important about the derecho conversation, which is basically a big line of thunderstorms that produces damage over a large area, um, is that the northern plains is where we would yeah. set. The time is right, May, June, July, that we could see these, but the northern plains, maybe even sometimes the central plains, you, know, you could see those in the, in the central portions of the U.S., but this far south, people are not really poised this time of year to see straight line wind damage of this magnitude. That's right. It's another indication for you to really pay attention because we look back over, say, some of the stats for derechos, and you see them really in the bullseye of the central plains, that purple there, one to two times a year we could typically see them. So it's not uncommon. But this time around, with the overall setup, it is going to happen across the southeast. Yeah, every couple of years, they say, is what it goes down. So it's not unprecedented, mm -hmm. but it's just unusual. And when you have unusual weather coming out of season, sometimes that's the thing, that's a factor that gets it. I think this is really interesting. If you watch today on your radars, you'll look for the bowing line of storms. That means it's got a bow shape. You'll track that bow shape. We think probably coming out of Arkansas and then accelerating down across right. the southeast, mm -hmm. really starting to pick up as in speed and intensity and over a large area, as much as 400 miles, we could see winds 60 miles an hour or stronger all the way down the stretch there, hundreds of miles. So therein lies how you can follow the weather and what we'll be looking for here at Fox Weather for this to happen. And it's coming in right now from Weather Command, right on the Fox Weather Alert System, what we've been waiting for. Here's the tornado watch in Alabama. Uh, we definitely saw the evidence of how this would come together. And now we've got this in place until 5 o'clock Central Time, a tornado watch now up for Alabama. This kind of is, is the precursor, guys. That means all the elements in place, the stage is set. And now we wait for the storms to develop. Twisting storms or straight line wind damage Either one is going to be a problem. What we've seen, this is the first tornado watch of the day. The severe thunderstorm watch boxes that we have out to the west, there has been a verbal mention, a written mention of the possibility of one or two tornadoes. But this is the zone that is more favorable for the tornadic development. Not a surprise here as we have these storms moving on through. And if we do get that wind event, that derecho, that would be later into the evening. This tornado watch that we have as it runs now until 5 o'clock tonight is perhaps for what we have developing right now. Look at Birmingham. We were looking at that live cam, Am uh, Amy, out of Birmingham, mm -hmm. and it was it was a mess. Those storms lifting off to the north, they're sub-severe right now, but we have more development that, that we're expecting. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.